This conference will now be recorded. God Amen. bless you. God bless you, D. God bless you, Pastor. Thank you. Oh, oh holy, somebody touch me. Oh, 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 somebody touch me. Holy, 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 somebody touch me. And it must have been the hand of the lord i'm singing holy oh holy somebody touch me holy oh holy somebody touch me holy oh holy somebody touch me and it must have been the hand of the lord it makes me love my neighbor somebody touch me makes me love my neighbor somebody touch me makes me love my neighbor somebody touch me and it must have been the hand of the lord it makes me praise god somebody touch me it makes me praise god somebody touch me makes me praise my god somebody touch me and it must have been the hand of the lord holy 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 somebody touch me and it must have been the hand of my god amen as i was listening to the prayers especially mother karam amen tonight amen i think about the woman who had an issue amen amen but she touched the hem of his garment and jesus cried out who touched me Amen. The crowd, the disciples said, all these people around you and you asked who touched me. But Christ knew that someone had made a divine connection. Because he said virtue. Amen. When you get in contact with God, when you connect with God, something comes out. Amen. He said virtue have left me. Amen. And he told the woman, go, thy faith have made thee whole. Amen. Amen. If I can just touch the him of his garment, I will be made whole. How many of you have faith tonight that you have that type of faith? If I can just get in reach, amen, amen. I don't need I don't need to ask or make a request, amen. Others cried out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy, amen. But this woman of faith said, I done tried everything and I've been everywhere, but if, let me try Jesus. I heard about a man named Jesus. He heals, he delivers, he, he sets free, amen. And, we thank God for the scriptures tonight that was read. We thank you for the songs tonight. Amen. Somebody touched me. Amen. It must have been. Have you been touched tonight? Amen. Have your life been changed tonight? Amen. The hand, when if, if God hand, if the hand of the Lord upon your life, can you examine yourself and you can you truly say that the hand of the Lord, amen, is upon your life and not in a, not a hand of chastisement, but a hand of guidance, a hand of uh, of protection, amen. We used to sing a song, Jesus, be a fence all around me every day. Jesus, I want you to protect me as I travel along my way. I know you can, yes, oh Lord, I know you will. Yes, Lord, fight my battles if I keep the Lord, be a fence all around me, amen. That's what the hand of the Lord would do is make your enemies stay at bay, amen. Amen. The hand of the Lord, amen, will provide for you. The hand of the Lord, amen, amen, will be, uh, make ways for you. Amen. So we just thank God. Amen. Somebody touch me. It must have been the hand of the Lord. Amen. There's a change in my mind. Amen. When the hand of the Lord is upon you. There's a change in your attitude when the hand of God is upon you. Somebody touch me. It must have been the hand of the Lord. We're grateful tonight. Amen. It's a blessed day all day. Amen. It's a good thing to be able to wake up. Amen. I wanted to say this on Sunday. Don't take it for granted. Amen. That we, we wake up every day. You ought to wake up rejoicing. On Sunday or any day that you wake up, you ought to praise God. And, you know, I know it sounds like uh, the re repetitious dialogue or traditional sayings of our four parents. But don't you know grandma and granddaddy know what they was talking about when you used to hear them say in their prayer, Lord, we thank you for another day. Lord, I thank you, amen, that the bed I laid in last night was not my cooling board, amen. We didn't understand that when we was a child, 
Amen. The bed that you laid in was not your cooling board. And the sheets that you uh, wrapped yourself in was did not become my winding sheet. And now you want to know something. I know when you heard it for years, you didn't understand it. But brothers and sisters, amen. If you keep living and one day when it's time for you to leave this world, amen. I seen it for myself, amen. That the bed that you laid in when 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 uh, 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 you give up the ghosts and, and life as we know it have departed out of this body of ours, amen. If you're laying in the bed, amen, that your body begins, the temperature, amen, drops, amen. And then that the bed becomes the cooling board, amen. I seen it, I was there uh, last year uh, when the, the director of the funeral mortuary service came in, amen. The bed my wife slept in or the, the, the place where she laid, that was her cooling board. Matter of fact, uh, the sheet, amen. Don't think they come with no fancy garments. No, the sheet that uh, you lay in, that's the sheet that they wrap you up in. That becomes your winding sheet, amen. And, and I was there to witness it. So you ought to thank God that when you lay down at night, you ate, and in the morning, amen, that when your eyes become open, amen, you ought to say, Lord, I thank you for another day, amen, that you watched over us all through the night. Thank you, Lord, that you. Uh, suffer no hurt, harm, or danger to come upon you. Don't take it for granted. Amen. If you don't say nothing else every day that the Lord allow you to see, you ought to just tell the Lord, thank you. Amen. Because it's not guaranteed a promise when you lay down that you're going to see this day. Death can soon, uh, I heard the hymnologist say, uh, 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 the, the, the day is past and gone and the evening shade appear. Oh, may we now remember well the night that death draws near. We're going to lay our garments by upon our bed to rest for death will soon disrobe us all from what we hear lord keep us safe this night secure from all our fears may the angels guard us while we sleep to the morning light appear amen we don't outline those hymns but you know there was a message in the song amen i you may hear me uh outline a hymn or restate a hymn but i'm looking not so much the melody but the message Amen. Of those words. Amen. And we take it not for granted. Amen. I know some of our elders are going on, but amen. Time have not changed and the circumstances have not changed. So we all still need the Lord tonight. And we're just so grateful. And don't uh, take for granted that the need to come together to pray. Amen. They were telling us for a long time, don't stop praying. That's one thing that our elders have left on record. Jesus said, man must always pray. And not think the early church was a praying church. They gathered together for prayer. We thank God we're not able so much to come together as we used to as a, uh, uh, in the public setting, but we're united virtually through prayer. A church that prays together will stay together. And you ought to always make prayer a priority if you're a believer. We got many people who have their names on the rolls, church roll as members, amen, but these disciples, when it's time for prayer, you ought to lay aside uh, and make your way, find your way to prayer. Uh, when you look in the third chapter of, of, of Acts, Peter and John, amen, at the hour of prayer was making their way to the temple. Okay. So we are the time when time comes for prayer. It should be no excuse. And I, you be, I was telling someone the other day, if I had a, if I had a, a dollar for every excuse I heard from some of these people, amen, from people, why they can't come to church, why they can't come to, if I had a dollar, even not even a dollar, but a dime, for some of the excuses I hear from her, I've heard from people, amen, in the last seven years as pastors, I think I'd be a millionaire. But then you're not making an excuse to me, you've been called to serve God. Eh? Pastor don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. You've been called to serve this present age. You've been called to honor God. Keep your eyes on the sparrow, amen. And you ought to keep your, you ought to want to be a God pleaser. Everything you ought to do ought to be pleasing to God. Can I get a witness tonight? So we thank God that we have an opportunity that we can come together and pray, amen. Don't be ashamed to pray. Nobody can't tell it like you can, ain't that right? Uh, our worship, as the preacher said on Sunday, our worship should be real. Your testimony ought to be real. Because nobody, don't nobody know like you know what the Lord has done for you. So uh, uh, little Bernadette said Sunday, open your mouth and say something. Come on now. Amen. If the little child can lead us, 
I mean, I know we got some grown folk that can add something to Pat, the, our devotional leader, Sister Deacon Brian, should not have to be asking or begging nobody to get online to say something for the Lord. Amen. Matter of fact, he shouldn't even have to be saying we got five minutes left. We got three minutes left. You know, it should be an overflow. It should be so high that he says, OK, we've run over. And now we have to cut off. <laughs> Amen. Sometime on some weeks, I think we doing watch night service. All is two minutes to 12 and all is well. But when it comes to prayer and praising, we ought to have, there ought to be an overflow. Can I get a witness tonight? Amen. I've been, they didn't ask me to preach, but uh, I'm opening my mouth and I'm going to say something. Amen. Amen. When it comes to giving your testimony, when it comes to reading a scripture, when it comes to spiritual exhortation, when it comes to singing a song, this is time has been set aside for the, the, the body of Christ to express themselves. A lot of times you can't do it on Sunday morning or Sunday morning worship in a corporate setting, but when it comes to prayer service, and this is the people's service, can I get a witness tonight? And so open your mouth and say something because there's gonna come a day and time that you're gonna wanna say, you don't hear me tonight. There's gonna come a day and time that you're gonna wanna pray. There's gonna come a day and time that you're gonna wanna read some scriptures, but you just won't be able. Matter of fact, uh, there's gonna be a come a day and time. I know some folks say, well, I, I ain't ready to come back to the sanctuary yet for whatever uh, reason that you have in your mind. But I'll tell you, don't stay out there too late because they're gonna come a day in time that you wanna get back in the sanctuary and you won't be able to. So be just be watchful, amen, how long you gonna stay out the sanctuary, amen. That's all I'm gonna say, folks, go everywhere else, amen. I heard someone said the other day that the, uh, uh, the bar stools are overcrowded, but the church pews are empty. Can you figure that out? Amen. Amen. The club stools are overcrowded. The social setting is overcrowded, but the per the church pews have become empty. Amen. So, but we have to, amen, make our way. We got to press our way. Keep pressing. Amen. The blessing is in the pressing and there's nothing that uh, uh, is going to turn or to be, be able to turn you around. Tonight, we just want to solicit your prayers. We thank God for Mother Karim, amen. We thank God we solicited continued prayers for our mother, Sally Gaddy. Uh, she was in the hospital. I'm not sure if she's home. She's looking forward to come home one day this week. But nevertheless, we're going to keep our mother and all our mothers in prayer. Mother Brown, Mother Callie Knight, amen. Uh, mother Reed, Mother Naomi Austin, you name her, Mother uh, Wright. Mother Cook, Mother Moy, Mother Saunders. Let's keep all our mothers in prayer. Amen. That God is a keeper. God is a healer. God is a protector. Amen. And then also we uh, talk with Brother George Middleton. He's in the hospital. He's soliciting the prayers of his church family. He's going through some medical issues right now, but we know that God is able. We pray with him today and we just trust in God that God will see him through. Let's keep our brother uh, Charles Hubbard in prayer. Our sister Denise Brown, amen. Uh, she's a soldier. She's got some issues, but she's concerned about others. And I think God is gonna continue to bless and keep her. That's what a true child of God, amen. Not so much they self, but they find time, even in spite of what all they're going through, that they have their mind and heart concerned about someone else. Also be mindful on this coming Saturday, at 12 noon that we're going to community outreach block association uh we're going to do our annual book bag drive and help the community we have some goodies that we're going to give out to the community so we solicit you greater Central, to come out and be supportive i know what the forecast may say so uh we, if we can't go stay outside all day we'll be out there a portion of the day other than that we'll give out from the, the basement the fellowship hall and nevertheless, I just wanted to get that out the way. And happy birthday to everyone that's having a birthday this week. God bless you, uh, name by name and home by home. Tonight, I'm excited as we now prepare for our inspirational message. Uh, Timothy says, for all scriptures are given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of or woman of God may be thoroughly perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. Uh, 
Tonight, we have a friend of Greater Central, a sister in Christ. Uh, she's going to come and give us our inspirational message. You first have to be inspired by the word in order to share the word. And I can testify that this sister, amen, this co-laborer in Christ, is definitely inspired to teach the word, to share the word, and to live the word. Uh, she is an educator by secular career, trade, and profession. Retired, God had blessed her in that realm. But a Christian educator, a minister of the gospel, and a servant of God by her calling. She loves the Lord with all her heart, mind, soul, and strength. And what I love about it, when it comes to the household of God, the house of faith, uh, she is one that is genuinely concerned about how things are handled and done in God's house. Amen. She, one, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, always wants to make sure that things are done in decency and in order. And we need more uh, education of, about the things that transpire in God's house. And she's one that's able to rightly divide the word of God. She loves the, wor the word of God. Uh, she's a helper. She's a lover of her pastor. She, while she was in New York, she's retired and living in Florida. But uh, while she was here, she was uh, uh, under the leadership of uh, Bishop Joseph Harris of the Life Changing Ministry. He uh, 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 licensed her as an elder. Amen. And she loved the Lord. Amen. So I'm going to introduce to some and present to other my friend, my sister. Amen. And, and, and just one who uh, I love dear. And she's just a blessing to me and my family. She's a blessing to Greater Central. Amen. But she has some Baptist roots as well. She come out of the Goodwill Baptist Church. Amen. I won't let you know. It's because you hear life changing. We all connected to the Baptist faith. God bless you in one way or another. But when introduced to some and present to others, our inspirational uh, message for this evening, none other, none other than uh, Evangelist uh, Elder Renee Casanova. Amen, Sister Casanova. Uh, feel free to bless our hearts tonight. And after the, uh, she's finished with her message, if our Minister Patricia Graham is on the line tonight, I would like for Minister Graham to come and close us out with a word of prayer and dismissal in that order. Elder Casanova, feel free to hit star six. I don't see her on. All right, Not I'm on. Bless the name of the okay. Lord. Can y'all hear okay. me? Yes, we can. Hallelujah. God bless you. Bless you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we just want to take a few minutes and just worship you. We just want to give you glory. God, we thank you for life and we don't take it for granted. For this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. God, we bless you. We thank you for another day. We thank you for another opportunity. In the mighty name of Jesus, there's nobody like you, God. We thank you. We glorify you. I just love you, Lord. I love you because you first loved me. Thank you for saving a soul like me, Lord God. Wretched soul that I am. In the mighty name of God. And we bless you. God, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank Reverend Hawkins and the Greater Central Baptist Church. We thank the officers and the gentlemen and the, and the trustees who thought it not robbery to ask me to share a couple of words of inspiration. The word that the Lord gave me bless my soul so immensely that I want to, I'm so honored and blessed to be able to share. It. But before we go forth on this, on this afternoon, this evening, I just want to pray and that ask the Lord to open up our understanding. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, we come to just give you glory. We come to give you honor and we come to give you praise. Lord God, we ask that as we go forth, that you go before us, Lord God, that we decrease. I decrease, Lord God, that you may increase. 
Lord God, we ask for the anointing because it's the anointing that destroys yokes and removes burdens. Lord God, we can't do anything without the anointing. Lord God, I ask that these words of clay, my lips of clay, be made flesh so that the words can be penetrate the hearts of those who will be hearing them on tonight. Lord God, I want to be able to illuminate the word of God that someone will say, what must I do to be saved? Someone will say, thank you, Lord Jesus, for a new level of godliness in my life. Lord God, we ask that you forgive us. I ask that you forgive us of our sins right now, sins of omission and sins of commission. Anything we've done against you, Lord God, in word, thought, or deed that offended you, because, Lord God, you said, if we regard any iniquity in our hearts, you don't even hear us. And, Lord God, this is the confidence that we have in you, that if we ask anything according to your will, you will hear us. And if you hear us, you will answer. And, Lord God, as we go forth, Lord God, we ask for all distractions and distractions to be removed right now in the name of Jesus. We bind a spirit that will try to come in and thought the word that will go out. We ask, Lord God, anyone who has an ear, let them hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church on this evening. And we bless you and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So the Lord is good all the time. And like the Baptist said, we say, and all the time, God is good. So the Lord, the word that the Lord gave me for the people of God, just to inspire you, and I won't be before you long, but just to inspire you and to bless you like the Lord blessed me. The word is God is able. I was meditating on this word and I was thinking about this word and the Lord said, let the people know that I am able to do any and everything. And to support that scripture, we have the word of God that says, Matthew 19 and 26, but Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with God, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And we have Luke 1 and 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And the scripture for tonight's inspirational message comes from Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. And it says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. And it says that he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we may ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. And exceedingly means more than. It's, it's vast. It's enormous. We can't even comprehend it. And the Lord says he will do exceedingly and abundantly or because he's able to do that. Man can't do it. Women can't do it. Only God can. When we think about the things that God can do for us, it blows our mind. For example, we might ask somebody to give us $50. We might ask somebody to give us $100. That's something that man can do. But God can give you a million dollars. That's exceedingly and abundantly beyond what we can ask or think. Because that is God all by himself. The, the young lady in prayer service said, read a scripture said, favor is for life. God bestows favor on those who choose to do so. Favor is for life. We hear people talking about, oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. How you know? How you know? Is God doing things for you that is exceedingly and abundant beyond what you can even think. When we say think or imagine, we say that this is something we'd have no idea about. The things that God is getting ready to do for us, we have no ideas. We can't comprehend. There's scripture that says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart the things that the Lord has laid up for those who love him. I want you tonight, I implore you, to think outside the box. Go outside the box. Whatever God has placed on your heart, whatever desires, whatever dreams, whatever ambitions, 
Matthew 6 and 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So if you put God first, God is able to do whatever we want. But let me caution you. God will not do it if there's sin. Because God cannot dwell with sin. Two spirits that are contrary cannot possess the same body. So if you have sin, right now it's time for us to take inventory. Psalm 51, create in me a clean heart. So let's take some inventory. Get it out. Get all that garbage out of us so that God can do what he wants to do. That he can do exceedingly and abundantly all that we can ask him to think. He's able to do anything we can imagine according to the power that worketh in us. So here comes faith because God can do it, but do you believe him? We have a tendency to say, oh, I believe you, Lord, I believe you. But when the road, when the dirt hits the road, do we believe God? Do we believe that he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly? Do we believe that he's able to save our household? Because the word says, if we believe on the name of Jesus Christ, me and my household shall be saved. So you know what? Our kids may go astray. Our family members may go astray. But we believe God is able because the Bible says, train up a child in the way that he may go. And when he or she is older, they will not depart. So let them go. But we know that we've set the foundation and we believe God because God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, we believe it. The Bible said he sent his word and the word did not return unto him void. I believe the word of God. I wholeheartedly believe the word of God. Having the power and the access, it says the power that worketh in us, is a key to having a gun and not knowing how to use it. So the gun is powerful, but if you don't know how to use it, it's to no avail. The same thing with an educated mind. You could be educated, but if you don't know how to use it, it's to no avail. So let's think about the power that worketh in us. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. It's the power of the Holy Ghost that will have us ask God to think things beyond our wildest imagination. And I don't know, I'm saying this because there are some things that God has placed on the heart of his people. There are some things that God has told you and only you can do. And you, you shudder and you fall back because you think it's too big. And God is saying, with man, it may be impossible. But with me, all things are possible. Because I am the God that is able to do it. So be encouraged and let God do what God has called you to do. God has given us different gifts and talents. In, in the Gospels, it talks about the five talents. It talks about the talents. That he gave one five, he gave one four, he gave one three, two one. And we know the story, the one with the one going to go and try to hide it. God said, I didn't tell you that, you slothful servant. I did not tell you that. So let's use what God has given us to do what God has called us to do. Because if God has given it to us, God is able to sustain us. God is able to make it come to pass. The Bible says that the power of life and death is in our tongue. So there are some things we have to speak life to, and then there are some things we have to speak death to. So if you are always doing the same thing and not getting the results that you want or not getting the results that God has called you to do, you need to speak death to that in the name of Jesus. He said, live, live, live. His words are life. And we have the power of life and death in our very tongue. When we look over our lives and think about what God has done, it's amazing. All we can say is thank you. When he stopped that bullet, thank you. When he stopped that mugging, thank you. When he allowed sickness to come on me but didn't kill me, thank you. When he saved a soul like me, thank you. Because it's not that I've been so good. It's not that we've been so good. But God has been good to us. God is able to accomplish for us beyond our limited vision and our humble attempts to serve him. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the hearts the things that God has laid up for us. We need to broaden our horizon. 
We need to see through the eyes of the Lord. Because with him, nothing, no thing is impossible. And God is able to do what he has promised. And the promises of God are yea and amen. And God has made us some promises. He's promised to heal us. He's promised to deliver us. He's promised to make us the head and not the tail. He's promised to make us the lender and not the borrower. He's promised to do exceedingly above all that we can ask for. He's promised to save our whole household. He said that the blessings of the Lord make it rich and addeth no sorrow. He's able to do that because he can't lie. The Bible said he's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. So if he said it, it shall come to pass. Our problem is, do we believe it? Do we believe that God is able? On this night tonight, I want you to know, I believe God is able. I believe God can do the miraculous. If you're looking for a home, he can give you that. If you're looking for peace, he can give you that. The Bible says he will he who keeps his mind on Jesus, he will keep you in perfect peace. Right now, I pray for peace of mind to those who are tormented because the blood of Jesus is against you. There are those of us who serve God wholeheartedly with all that we have, but the devil tries to torment. And right now, in the name of Jesus, we bind that spirit and we send it back to the pits of hell because we can have what God says we can have. We can do what God says we can do. We can have peace. We can have prosperity. The Bible says that the poor will be with us always. But then God says he'll make it rich and add us no start. So, so we believe him on today. We're not, we do not take his word as false. We take his word as factual truth. Because he can't lie. It's not in his nature. It's not in his nature. God, in Romans 4, 19 to 21, um, it says he did not weaken in faith when he considered his own as good as dead, since he was about 100 years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. So this scripture talks about God promising Abraham and Sarah, in their old age, waited 25 years, waited 25 years, and Sarah even laughed. But God said, I'm going to do this thing. And the Bible says Abraham wavered not on the promise. He believed God. Just like when God told him, leave your kinfolk. And I'm going to make you the father of many nations. I'm going to bless you. The sand, as much as the stars are from the sky and the sands of the earth, I'm going to bless you. Abraham believed God to do what he promised. Even in his old age, even when he put it upon himself to try to make the promised child, did not come back. But when God spoke to him and said, I'm going to bring forth this child. Even in your old age, even with the barrenness of your wife, Abraham believed God. He was able to do what he promised. That's the kind of faith we got to have. When the Lord tells us that I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly. So if your promises seem to have been delayed, don't worry, because we know blessings delayed are not blessings denied. And we know God cannot lie. So what I want you to do tonight, I want you to go back to prophecy. I want you to go back to the preach word that's been over your life. I want you to go back to your Sunday school lessons and just think about what God has told you. Because God is able to perform it. It might take 10 years. It might take 15 years. It might take 25 years. But it will come to pass. And you know what? In that waiting, serve God. Do the things that God has told you to do and see if he don't bring it to pass. Things seem impossible with man again, but with God, all things are possible. Remember, it is according to your faith and the power that worketh within you. This is the scripture 
we said in Ephesians that he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly beyond all that we can ask and receive. So when we think about the faithfulness of God, we have to be faithful to God because we have not always been faithful to God. God has always been faithful to us. So we think about things that come upon us, sickness, the death of loved ones, tra tragedy, but God is still able to keep us in peace. God is still able to keep us secure. God is still able to keep us comforted. Things might not always be good. We might have lost some things. We might have lost some loved ones. We may have lost some possessions, cars, houses, clothes, but God is able to still bring us through. And I'm reminded of the three Hebrew boys when they would not bow. Daniel 3, 17, 18 says, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve, the God we serve is able to deliver us. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know your majesty that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of God you have set up. That is a powerful testimony to believe in that God is able to do any and everything we ask for. These were three young Hebrew boys. They weren't adults. They were young Hebrew boys. Grew up in the faith. Knew their God. Because there is scripture that says there's a generation that don't even know God. These three young men knew God. They stood on what they were taught. The Bible says teach them in the morning, in the noonday, in the evening. Teach them. They knew God. There was a decree that went out. You have to bow. When you hear, you have to bow. And they said, we're not going to do it. We're not going to eat your food. We're not going to drink your wine. Do whatever you want to. We're not going to do it. Because we believe in our God. That's how sold out we have to be. I don't care. Come what may. Come what may. Earthquakes, COVID-19, arthritis, diabetes. Come what may. We are not going to bow down. We believe you, God. We believe you for healing. We believe you for COVID-19 recovery. We believe you for economic recovery. We believe you for the recovery of our loved ones. We believe you for the recovery of salvation to our family members. We believe you, God. And there are some things that seem impossible, but we're not going to bow down. And like the three Hebrew boys, if he don't do it, don't mean that he's not able to. Just means that right now he's got a different plan for us. And that's the thinking we have to go by. I believe you, God, that you're able to do it. But if you choose not to, God, for whatever reason, either I'm not ready for it, it's not what you desire for me, or it's not the time for me to receive it, don't mean that you're not able to. I still believe you're able to. And so much that when he they went into the fire, they came out and said, isn't that Jesus? It's the three we took in, sent in there, but one looks like the son of God. Because when we believe like that, there is nothing that the Father won't do for us. He's with us. The Bible says that he's with us always, even to the end of time. So he's able to deliver us. And even if he doesn't, don't mean he won't, that he's not able to. And my final verse and my final thought to you is God is from Jude 24 and 25. And it says, now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, power, both now and evermore. And we always have a tendency, excuse me, to associate that scripture with the benediction. But as I was studying this, the Lord said, it's even more than that. I'm able to keep you from falling. I'm able to keep you from falling into sin. I'm able to keep you from falling into depression. I'm able to keep you from falling into despair. I'm able to keep you from falling 
from anything that might come to try to do you harm. Because I am your God, and I will present you faultless if you believe me. I'm able to do that for my people. I'm able to do that for those who I call the children of God, the sons of God. Because it says it just does not appear that when he comes, we shall be called the sons of God. We're all his creation, creatures, but we're not all his creation. Because only those who call him father does he call the sons of God. So he's able to keep us. He's able to do beyond what we could ever imagine and or think. And yes, we've had some tragedies. We've lost some loved ones. We've, we've lost some relationships. We've been hurt. We've caused hurt. But tonight, I want you to be inspired to know that God is able to make all things new, to make all things right. And even in our losses, and even in our tragedy, he's able to give us a peace that surpasses all understanding. Because God is love, and he will do it for his people. We talk about the, Reverend Hawkins got on this evening before he presented me, and he talked about the power of prayer. There is power in prayer. We pray every morning from 6 to 6 a.m., Monday through Friday. And we have some powerful prayers. We intercede on behalf of this country, this nation, God's people, our family as a whole. There is power in prayer. And there is something I want to, read, I want to leave with you guys. The Bible says that we are confident. That means without lacking the ability to believe. We are confident. It is going to happen that God will answer our prayers if we pray according to his word. His will is his word. He will answer our prayers if we regard no iniquity in our hearts. He will answer our prayers if we walk upright before him. He will answer our prayers because he has to honor his word. He will answer our prayers if we pay our tithes and offerings, because he says he will he will destroy the devour of those who come to take up our seat. He will bless us and keep us if we do according to God's word. And have we always done the right thing? No. Are we without fault? No. Do we sometimes miss the mark? Yes. But you know what the key is? The key is to repent. The key is to ask God for forgiveness, and we'll get right back into the presence of the Lord. So on tonight, I implore you, I ask you to believe that God can do any and everything we ask him to. And God is, is saying that there are some things he's promised the people of God. There are some things he promised you as a young child. You have not seen it come to fruition. He said, but I'm able to do it. Do you believe? Our whole walk is about faith. Our whole walk is about believing God. And on tonight, believe that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly beyond any and everything that we can ask. There's no good thing will he withhold to them that walk up right before him. Let's be like them three Hebrew boys. We're not going to bow down because we believe you're able. And if you choose not to do it, we still know that you're able. You just chose a different route. We're going to be like Jews. We know that you're able to keep us from falling. In the mighty name of Jesus. We're going to be like Abraham and Sarah. We're going to wait on the promises of God. Because the promises of God, again, yea and amen. And you can't lie, God. It's not in your nature. And you like, the Bible says, he likes giving good gifts. A father likes giving good gifts. How about Jesus? How about our father? We call him our father. He wants us to depend on him. He wants us to love on him. He wants us to be able to draw men unto him. Because he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And we want to worship God. We want to praise him. We want to live in a, in a worship 
straight state of mind. We want to keep our mind stayed on Jesus. And and I'm, I want you to understand that things are going to come. Things are going to come. That's how the world is. That's what we're made of. But when the, when the dirt hits the road, when the dust hits the road, we can say, God is able. Lord, you allow this to be so, you're going to bring me through. Loud, God, you allow this to be so, I'm going to get the, you're going to get the glory. That's the song, Marvin. After this, there shall be glory after this. So there are some things we have to go through. Trials and tribulations. Count it all joy. That's what the scriptures say. When we fall into dive of temptation. Count it all joy. Because God is going to get the glory. Our very existence in life, serving God, he's getting the glory. The devil man, but ain't nothing he can do about it. And I thank you for this opportunity. I bless your name. I bless God's name. I pray that someone was inspired. My prayer is just to remember, remember that God is able. Trust and believe God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, let's put our hands together wherever you are for this powerful a wonderful message, oh God, that God has inspired us with tonight. God is able, using his servant, Elder Castanova, we thank you tonight. God is an awesome, great God, and God, you did it again. We look to you, my Father, which cometh our help. For you remind us tonight, God, that our help cometh from you, and that you're able to do all things but fail, oh God. Oh, God, that you still look, you sit high and you look low and you already know what we need, God. Uh, bless you tonight, God, for renewing our memory and our thoughts and, and your biblical text, oh, God, to remind us, oh, God, that uh, our blessings uh, are delayed, oh, God. They might seem like they're delayed. Uh, but you're an on-time God, and, and our blessings are not denied, oh God, because you're able to do all things, uh, as your messenger said tonight, to do anything and everything, oh God, that we ask you to do. God, we're, we're just asking you to bless and continue to bless us tonight, uh, for we are weak, but you are mighty, God. Uh, you know our every thought, so oh God. You know our hearts tonight, God. You know what each one of us needs tonight, God. Oh, God, saturate us, oh, God. Saturate us, oh, God, in your Holy Spirit. Give us, oh, God, the strength to be obedient, to trust you, God, to give everything to you, God, because you've already worked it out for our good. We thank you for Elder Castanova tonight, oh, God. Restore her tonight, God. Oh, God, give her everything that she's poured out. Oh, God. Oh, God, glorifying you tonight, God. We ask you to continue to be with her. And, oh, God, keep her, God. Oh, God, bless our pastor on tonight. Continue to give him a vision, oh, God. To continue to bring forth your word in inspiring ways, oh, God, so that we will not forget. Oh, God, that your word is your bond, oh, God. And that that text, oh God, that we read every day, oh God. Oh God, you promised us uh, that you'd never leave us or forsake us, oh God. Oh God, bless your officers tonight, every deacon, every deaconess, oh God, every missionary. Oh God, the people that you call tonight, uh, they are asking for prayer tonight, every mother, oh God. Oh God, every servant on tonight, uh, go to the hospitals, oh God, in the nursing homes, oh God. Uh, Oh, God, somebody need a touch, oh, God. Uh, oh, God, oh, God, we need to continue to make yes. prayer. Uh, oh, God, a priority in our lives, oh, God. Because you know you, we know you are prayer answering, God, tonight, God. Uh, oh, God, I, I, oh, God, I believe in you for the healing tonight. Uh, our country, our nation is in an uproar, oh, God. Uh, not only our nation, oh, God, uh, but the world is in an uproar, oh, God. Uh, oh, God, people would rather kill, oh, God, uh, than love on each other and give them peace and, and, and give them bread to eat and, and give them shelter to live in, oh, God. Uh, oh, God, teach us to love our brothers and our sisters 
no matter where they came from, oh God. Oh God, bless our leaders tonight. And, and oh God, all over the world, oh God, give them a vision, oh God. But not just their vision, but your vision, God. Oh God, let them repent of the sins, oh God, of the world. And come on the Lord's side. We thank you tonight, God. We thank you, oh God. If we had a thousand tongues, we couldn't thank you anymore, God. Oh God, heal our youth, oh God, as they're preparing to go back. Uh, oh God, to school, oh God, open up their minds. Uh, dispatch angels now over the houses of every, every, every school tonight, every teacher tonight. Uh, oh God, we know you're able to do all things but fail. Oh God, we know you got this coronavirus. Uh, oh God, this Delta virus has no, no weapon formed against us. We'll prosper, God. Uh, oh God, put it in the hearts and minds of your people to follow your directions, oh God, uh, so that they might be saved, oh God. Hallelujah, we thank you, Jesus. Uh, oh God, until we meet again, oh God, uh, you said tonight in Ephesians, oh God, now unto him, that is you, my father, who is able to do all things uh, exceedingly and abundantly, oh God, above all that we ask, uh, of things according to your power, oh God. Hallelujah, God, we know you've got all power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, God. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, and all these blessings. Lord. We ask in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, Hallelujah. in the name of the Holy Ghost, it is in Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Let every believer tonight say amen. 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 And amen. amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 God. Hallelujah. I feel his spirit. Hallelujah. I feel his spirit. Hallelujah. I feel his spirit. All over. Thank you, Jesus. I feel his spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Let the words of my mouth uh, and the meditation of my heart uh, be acceptable, Lord, uh, in your sight, my Father. Oh, Lord, uh, my strength, oh God, uh, and my redeemer. Hallelujah. Oh, God, come on and say with me, amen. 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 We thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, God, open up your mind and bless the Lord with your heart. Come on, bless it. Hallelujah. I bless each and every one tonight. Thank you, Elder. Jesus. God is able. Bless you, Pastor, and bless you. Thank you. Thank you for the word. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you, Jesus. Oh, Hallelujah. Uh, bless you. Uh, bless the preacher. Bless you. 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 Oh, this yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes. God, do it. God, do it. God, do it. God, do it for me. God is me. Right yes, he is. Do it for yes. me right now, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. I can't like God bless each and every one tonight. Have a great night. Yes, God bless you too. Yeah, bless you, Pastor. Bless your mother. Yeah. 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 Arms, yeah. arms, arms, legs. Oh my God. And she just looks sad. I, I was, when I saw her, I was like shocked. 